So the next piece is the annual impairment review. And just like any other long-lived asset, you know, goodwill impairment, intangible, intangibles impairment, uh, PPE, real estate, your right of use assets, lease liability, not lease liabilities, your right of use assets also have to be uh, assessed for impairment. And so on the screen is kind of like the overview of how to perform that impairment. So the first step would be identifying any indicators of impairment. And we'll go through that on the next slide. If you are following US GAAP, you go through two steps versus IFRS has one step. Really the difference between these steps is that for US GAAP, the first step is conducting a recoverability test by comparing the undiscounted cash flows with the assets carrying value. And if that is uh, indicative that you're not going to recover the assets, then you go to the next step, which is similar to IFRS step one, and that's comparing your carrying value against the fair value. Then the subsequent lease measurement, because now you're impacting that right of use, it's not gonna be able to amortize like it normally does. Instead, you're going to amortize it similar to a finance lease over the remaining term of that lease. So here are some impairment indicators, and this could happen because of a ton of reasons. You know, good things are happening in the company, bad things happening in the company, you know, even just changing the nature of how you're using an asset. So let's say that you are changing your physical location of your corporate office from New York City to St. Louis because you want to move to the Midwest and you want to save some money. The only problem with that is you have this five-year lease in your New York City office uh, building. But let's say you just simply don't care about that. You want to get to St. Louis as fast as possible. Well, in that case, uh, in the event that you can't readily sublease that for the same amount of money as you're paying to the landlord, because just because you're leaving New York City doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stop paying your rent. So if you can't get a sublease, or maybe it's going to take you six, nine, 12 months to find one, then you want to think about some possible impairments. You can also have an impairment when you're looking at machinery. Let's say that there's this new crazy technology and you were uh, renting this machinery that you thought was of a uh, great technology, but this new wave of something comes out. I don't, I'm not really a manufacturer person, but it could age very, very quickly if you're in a three or five year lease when new technology comes out. Also legal proceedings that impact the nature of the operation, the nature of the asset, all of those things can play a role in impairments. And just to go through what it would look like in your post impairment amortization schedule. So first and foremost, if you have an impairment, your entry would be debit to the loss, credit to the right of use asset to get that asset value down to what it should be, aka what that fair value is. And so let's say that uh, the impairment balance or the fair value is $50,000 and the remaining lease term is 24 months. That means that your uh, lease costs would be the $2,083 plus the liability accretion and interest expense that you have. At the end of the day, the right of use asset balance will still go down to zero. It will just be going down a little bit differently. Mm -hmm.